Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 6, which is benzene and its derivative. There are three subtopics altogether, which is 6.1 introduction, 6.2 nomenclature, and 6.3 chemical properties. So in this video, we're going to focus on the sub on the two subtopics, which is 6.1 introduction and 6.2 nomenclature only. In this video, we're going to look into and describe uh, the properties of aromaticity, the chemical structure, resonance structure of benzene, and we also need to draw and name benzene derivative according to the IUPAC nomenclature for the monosubstituted, disubstituted, tri- and tetrasubstituted benzene. Also, we also draw and give example of benzene when it becomes the substituents, which is the branching. So, when the benzene becomes the substituents and have a formula of C6H5, it is known as phenyl, and it is, will be known as benzyl if there is one carbon chain attached to the benzene ring. So when the formula is CH2, C6H5, it is known as benzyl. If the formula is six, C6H5, it's going to be known as phenyl. Okay, so not the differences here. So without any further ado, let us start. So an aromatic compound is basically an organic compound that contains a benzene ring in its molecule. So this structure is also known as a ring and the benzene ring will have the chemical formula of C6H6. According to the chemical structure of benzene, it was suggesting that the benzene ring will have the alternating of carbon-carbon double bond and the carbon-carbon single bond. So it's going to be alternating, so double bond here, single bond here, double bond here, single bond here, double bond here, single bond here, and so on and so forth. So the chemical structure basically say that the carbon-carbon double bond and the carbon-carbon single bond going to be Bersilangsili or alternating. At the same time, the benzene gonna have the pi electron completely delocalized around the ring, and this is known as the conjugation or complete conjugation. So this is the structure of benzene, and as you know that electrons are constantly moving inside the ring. So the pi electron, okay, so you know that this single bond here is known as sigma, and in the carbon-carbon double bond, one gonna be sigma bond and gonna one the other one gonna be pi bond. So you have learned this in chapter four of the semester one, which is the chemical bonding. So one of the one bond here representing two electron. So when we have three, we're gonna have a total of six electron. Okay, and these six electrons are not basically fixed. They did not bersifat the tap. It will move around the uh, the ring. So it will be delocalized into here, or they are delocalized into here and delocalized into here. So they are constantly moving. So due to the moving of the electron that are constant that are constantly delocalizing inside the ring, what will happen was it's gonna form a resonance structure. And because of the electrons are constantly moving, we're gonna draw it in terms of a, a dotted line here. And these are basically can be represented by a cyclic in the middle of the benzene ring. So benzene can be drawn as this structure or this structure and both are accepted. Now there are few criteria for aromaticity. So the, uh, the criteria is the aromatic compound need to be cyclic which is shown as the cyclic structure. It need to be planar which means that it lies on the single plane and then they are completely conjugated as shown here because it completely can, uh, the electron can completely move around the ring. And last but not least, it need to have a particular number of the pi electron. And this refers to the obeying of the Huckel's rule. So Huckel's rule stated that cyclic, planar, and completely conjugated compound that contain 4n plus 2 pi electron. Okay, so n here basically are integers. So n can be 0, n can be 1, n can be 2, 3, and so forth. So when it satisfies the condition, it, is, it means that it obeys Huckel rule and then they are aromatic. Okay. So now, let's say if I put n is equal to 1, okay, n equal to 1, I know that my 4 times 1 going to be 4, plus 2 going to be 6 pi electron. Okay. So this is situation number one. If I put n is equal to two, so I will get eight plus two, I'm gonna get 10, 10 by electron. 
if I put n is equal to 3, I'm going to get 14 pi electron. Okay, so basically what you need to do is you need to calculate the number of electron in the cyclic and then look whether it obeys the Huckel rules or not. Okay, so let us look into the example here. So the let's say if we have aromatic compound with a single ring. Okay, so first we have to calculate the number of the pi electron that they have. Okay, so they have 1, 2, and 3 pi bond. So 3 pi bond and 1 bond rep represent 2 electron. So it's going to be 6 pi electron. Okay, and according to the Huckel's rule, 4n plus 2 pi is equal to 6. So you can bring 2 to the other side and then we're going to get 4n is equal to 4 and n is equal to 1. So when n is equal to 1, means that it is an integer. So it basically means that it obeys the Huckel rule where n is equal to 1. So you can say that benzene is aromatic because it contains 6 pi electron and it obeys the Huckel rule. And of course, all the rings are basically cyclic. Okay, and they are planar because they lie on the same plane. Dalam satu landasan yang sama. Okay, now let us look into the next example. Let's say if we have a naphthalene here. So if first we have to find the total number of electron. So two electron here, four, six, eight, and ten. Okay, five pi bond, and one bond represent two electron. So it's gonna be five times two electron. So we're gonna get ten pi electron. Okay, and now we need to see whether it obeys Huckel rule or not. So we're going to do 4n plus 2 is equal to 10. And then we can bring 2 on the other side. So we're going to get 4n is equal to 8. And we can divide, we can find n by dividing 8 divided by 4. So we get n equal to 2. So when n equal to 2, which is an integer, we can say that it obeys the Huckel rule. n is equal to 2. So we can say that it is an aromatic compound. Now, let us look into the next example here, which is 1,3-cyclobutadiene. Okay, so we have 1 and 2 bond here. So 1 bond representing 2 electron, and here representing 2 electron. So the total of electron that we have is 4 electron. Okay, now we're going to look into the Huckel's rule, whether they, whether they obey it or not. So we got 4n plus 2 is equal to 4. So 4n is equal to 2 because we bring the 2 on the other side. And n is equal to 0 0.5. Okay, so n is equal to 0 0.1, 0 0.5. This basically does not obey the Huckel rule because the Huckel rule states that n needs to be an integer. Okay. But however, 0 0.5 is not an integer. Integer means that it needs to be 0, 1, 2, and 3 without the decimal places. Okay, so when you have the decimal places, it basically means that it does not obey the Huckel's rule. Okay. Now we're going to do the subtopic of 6.2, which is the nomenclature of the benzene. But now we're going to look into the mono substituted benzene first. So mono means one. So there's only one substituent or one branching that happens on the benzene. So in this case, benzene is going to be the parent's name and the substituent is indicated by a prefix. Okay, let us look into the example here. So as I mentioned, mono means one substituent, right? So in this case, the benzene is going to be the parent name. And it's going to be attached with a chlorine as the branch ataupun dia punya substituent. So in this case, it's going to be named as chlorobenzene. For this case, it's going to be named as bromobenzene. And this one going to be named as the nitrobenzene. And for this uh, substituent here, it's going to have CH2CH3 which refers to a ethyl. And it attached to a benzene ring. So it's going to be ethylbenzene. Now, we're going to look into a special name of benzene, benzene when it is monosubstituted. So just now, they don't have any special name, but for the special name as shown here, they're going to be six of them. 
Okay, so we first we have this one, second we have this one, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So this um, each of these species here will have the special name. For example, here you will be tempted. Okay, ada 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 tendency nak tulis sebagai metal benzene. However, when doing the naming, we need to write the special name. So for the starter, you have to memorize the special name. So when the benzene ring is attached with a metal group. It will be known as toluene. Okay, so use this during the naming. Meanwhile, for this one, you might be tempted. I can add a tendency to come to this as hydroxybenzene. Okay. However, this compound here will have the special name, and this special name is known as phenol. So when doing the benzene, when doing the naming, you have to use the special name, and you need to be able to draw back the structure when you were given the special name. So this is something that you have to memorize for the first time. Okay. And this one will have the special name of aniline. And here, the benzene ring will be attached with a carboxyl group. So this one going to be named as benzoic acid because this refer to a carboxylic carboxyl group or refer to an acid. So when it attached with a benzene, it's going to be named as benzoic acid. So this is the special name. This is going to be the special name. And here, the benzene ring is going to be attached with a carbonyl. And this refer to the carbonyl of the aldehyde. So it's going to be benzaldehyde. Okay. And for this part, it is also a carbonyl, but it refers to the carbonyl of ketone. Okay, because it attached with C double bond C, 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 and C double bond O, and C here. So we're going to refer to ketone, here refer to aldehyde, because it attached with the hydrogen. So C double bond C double bond C, 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 which is ketone, so this is going to be known as the ben acetophenone or benzophenone. Okay, so this is going to be your, the thing that you need to memorize for the special name. So this slide is very, very important. And there are six of them. Okay. Now we're going to look into the disubstituted benzene. So disubstituted benzene means that the benzene is going to be attached with two substituents. Okay. So the, the relative position of substituents are indicated by the prefixes ortho, meta, and para, which is O, M, and P. Or we can use numbers to indicate that. So let us look into the example here. Okay, so first we have benzene attached with two substituents. So di means two. Okay, so we can do the numbering from one here and number two here. So we can name it as one two dibromo benzene. Or one two here, we can change it into ortho. So ortho dibromo benzene, which is O. Okay, O here refer to ortho. Okay, and it refers to 1, 2. Okay, now let us look into the next example where we have benzene ring attached with two substituents of nitro. So, like usual, we're going to do the naming, uh, we're going to do the numbering first, which is number 1 here, carbon number 2 here, carbon number 3 here. So, you can name it as 1, 3 dinitro benzene. Or, you can write 1, 3 as meta. Okay, M minus refer to meta. So M dash dinitro benzene. Okay, one, two, or two. Now, for the next part, we're going to have benzene attached with two chlorine. So we're going we're gonna to do the numbering one, two, three, four. So it's going to be one, four dichlorobenzene, or one, four here, you can change it into P here. P here refer to a para. Okay, so it's gonna be P dichlorobenzene. So both of the name here are gonna be accepted, and you need to be able to change one four into para if it is needed in the exam. Alright. Now, uh, for the substitute benzene, um, if two or more substitute, if two or more different substituents are present. We have to select one of the substituents that give the new parent name. And then we use the special name if they have. 
So this is something that I have talked in the earlier slide that um, there will be six, six special names. So you have to use them. And then we need to um, do the naming according to the priority of the functional group as shown here. So the one at the above gonna get the parent name, okay? So let's say if you have a benzene and it is attached with a COOH as well as the nitro group. So the COOH is gonna be the parent name because it is the priority. Meanwhile, the nitro group gonna be the substituent because it is not the parent name. And then the highest priority substituent will be the parent change as mentioned and the carbon going to be labeled as carbon number one here. Okay, to know more about this, let us look into the example. Okay, let's say if we have a compound of benzene that attached with COOH and nitro group. So COOH is going to be above and it's going to be the highest priority. Meanwhile, NO2 is going to be lower in the group, so it's going to be the substituent. So, uh, we're going to apply the special name on the highest priority group here. Okay, so this one is going to be the parent name, so you're going to get number one. Okay, you're going to get number one here, and NO2 is going to get number two. So, number one here, the name is going to be benzoic acid, and number two, will have the substituent of nitro. So it's gonna be 2-nitro benzoic acid. Okay? Or you can use it as ortho nitro benzoic acid because it refers to 1-2 here. Okay? Now, let's say if you have a benzene ring and attach with another two substituent, OH and NO2. Okay? As what you can see here, OH is higher up compared to the nitro. So OH here is going to be the parent name. So the parent name of this special name is going to be the phenol. Okay, and as usual, we have to write the numbering. So the numbering of the special name, going to, the carbon here is going to get the number 1, or number 2, and number 3 here. So it's going to be trinitrophenol. Or you can convert it into meta nitro phenol. Okay, and as you know, uh, we have to do the numbering 1, 2, 3 here, not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because we need to get to the lowest number of the substituent. So the same principle is still applied as in the previous chapter. Now, let's say if we have another benzene ring and two substituent we have nh2 and ch3 here so as you look here nh2 gonna be higher compared to the ch3 so ch3 here is the alkyl group okay so this one gonna be the parent name okay so and when the benzene is attached with the nh2 the special name here gonna be aniline okay aniline and then the carbon that attached to the substituent is going to get number 1. And then here number 2, number 3, number 4. So it's going to be 4-methyl-aniline. Okay. Or you can put it as para-nitrophenol because it's going to be 4. And 1,4-para-nitrophenol. Alright. Now we're going to do the naming for tri and tetra substituted benzene. So, as usual, the position of substituent must be indicated by numbers. And then we have to list the substituent according to the alphabetical order when writing the name. So, the carbon atom bearing the substituent that defines the new parent name is numbered as carbon 1. So, the same principle still apply as before. Okay, so here we're going to do the numbering first, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so try here means that 3 substituent attached to the benzene ring. Tetra here means that 4 substituent attached to the benzene ring. Maksudnya benzene tadi ada 4 rangkaian ataupun 3 rangkaian. 
Tapi cara penulisannya masih sama. So, in this case, it gonna be 1, 2, 4, tripromo, benzene. Okay, and you do not write the numbering from on the left hand side, which is 1, 2, 3, 4. Because the when you do like this, it's going to be 1, 4, 6. 1, 4, 6, tribomo, benzene, which is not correct because we need to give the lowest number to the substituent. So that is why you follow the blue color here. So the numbering must go on the clockwise direction for this case. Okay, now let's see if you have a benzene which is attached with three uh, substituent here. So this one gonna be chloro, this one gonna be promo, and this one gonna be iodo. Okay, so in between chloro and iodo, C follows the alphabetical order. It is earlier in the alph alphabetical order. Okay, so chloro will get number one, bromine gonna get number two, and iodo gonna get number three. Okay, not the vice versa. It need to go this way. Okay, so but bromo is B, right? So we're gonna put bromo first. Okay, we're gonna put bromo first, and then B, C, chloro, and then lastly iodo, which is I. And then we give the numbering of promo as number two, chloro as number one, and iodo as number three. And then the and the parent name here gonna be benzene. Okay, so in this case they're gonna there are no special name, so you just do it like usual. Okay, now this is a tetra substituted benzene. Maksudnya ada empat substituent yang bersambung dengan benzene. So, in this case, here gonna be the special name. Okay, so they are special name for this case, which is CH3 attached with a benzene. The special name here gonna be named as toluin. Okay, and you have to do the numbering. So the special the the special name and the substituent that attached to the benzene will get number one, and then you're gonna do number two here, number three. 4, 5, and 6. Okay, so you know that the parent name gonna be toluene, and then the substituent gonna be 2, 4, 6, trinitro toluene. Okay. Okay, so metal benzene here, you can cut it off. Instead, you can write it as toluene because we need to write the special name here. Okay. So it's gonna be two four six trinitro toluene. Okay, now uh, in the previous slide you will see that benzene gonna be the parent name, especially when they are when they are having the special name. However, benzene can also be the substituent. So when the benzene becomes the substituent, it can exist as C six H five, which is known as the phenyl substituent, or C H two C six H five. So one extra carbon here, it's gonna be known as benzyl substituent. So benzene gonna be the substituent when uh, the the chain when the alkyl substituent is larger than the ring. Okay. So in this case, they're gonna have six carbon, right? But now when the chain, the alkyl chain gonna have more than six carbon, the benzene gonna be the substituent. Okay. So let us look into the example here. Okay, so in this case, the longest carbon chain is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so 8 carbon chain is much much longer than 6 carbon chain. So basically, the alkene here is going to be the parent name. So 8 carbon is going to be octane. And then, at carbon number 2, the benzene gonna be the substituent. Okay, so benzene here, as what you can see, it contains C6H5 because H, 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 and 
H here. So it have six carbon and five hydrogen. C six H five. So it's gonna be phenyl. So you can name it as two phenyl octane. Okay. Or the benzene can can again become the substituent when the chain contain the functional group. For example, carbon-carbon uh, double bond or carbon-carbon triple bond. So when the chain containing uh, unsaturated carbon, which is double double bond or triple bond or contain important functional group, the benzene ring gonna be considered as phenyl or the benzene substituent. So the same as before. Now let us look into the example here first. Okay. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four, which is we have one butene. Okay, and at carbon number three, we have the phenyl. Okay, so it's gonna be three phenyl, one butene. Okay, and for this case, um, we have important functional group which is OH. Okay. So the longest carbon change for this alcohol here is going to be 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so it's going to be secondary alcohol. So it's going to be 2 propanol. And then at carbon number 2, it is attaching with CH2, C6H5. So when CH2 and C6H5, this substituent is known as benzyl. Okay, so you're going to write this as 2-benzyl, two 2-propanol. Two 2-benzyl two and 2-propanol. Okay, so I think that's all for this video. See you again some other time. Bye!